My name is Peter Mears. I run a scuba diving center and I'm absolutely fascinated and intrigued by sharks, especially six gill sharks. Six gill sharks have been around for about 150 million years and really substantially not changed since then. Normally they live in very deep water and as a diver you can't really go there. But during the summer months they come shallow and if you're lucky enough you can see one slowly sliding by checking you out, which is an amazing experience. On February 5th, 2019, a deceased uh, pregnant female was washed up on shore at uh, Coal Bay in Saanich Inlet. The shark got quite a bit of media attention and a lot of people went to the beach to see it with their own eyes, which is great. So the University of Victoria wanted to do a necropsy and uh, since I knew some of the researchers, it was quite an opportunity for me to join them and to document the necropsy. I arrived about two hours earlier than the team and uh, I wanted to take some stills and, and video of the shark. And as I was doing that, I discovered that someone had uh, stolen the head to take the teeth and the jaw the night before. A lot of the kids and the parents who came onto the beach to see the shark were very disappointed. And uh, it was it is really a crappy move uh, just to take the teeth and the jaw for some souvenirs. It was quite funny because as I was on the beach taking pictures, more and more parents and kids uh, showed up. I became sort of an impromptu uh, beach educator on sharks. And many of the kids were really intrigued by the skin of the shark. If you rub the skin of the shark from the tail to the head, it feels rough, almost like sandpaper. Whereas if you rub it from the head towards the tail, which is the way the water flows, it's very, very smooth. And this is because there's tiny little scale-like teeth on the skin of the shark that helps the water flow more effectively along the skin and thus help the shark swim more efficiently. When the team showed up, the first thing they did was gather all the, the bins and the materials and then had a little powwow on um, how to perform the necropsy. And they don't just cut into the shark, they follow a protocol where they select certain things that they want from the shark. And vertebrae, and then all the pups we can take isotopes from. One of the first things they did was uh, fin clippings. So they used the fin clippings for DNA research. And after that, they started collecting the organs. Very important is the stomach and the stomach content because you can deduct what the shark has been eating. Another thing that they wanted are the livers. Now the livers are huge organs. They're very fatty and very floaty. So they help the shark with buoyancy because sharks typically, unlike many other fish, don't have a swim bladder. So that helps the shark uh, stay afloat. As the researchers were cutting into the shark, they had to be very, very careful. You don't want to pierce the organs and lose the content or the information. And so they, um, and so they had a little invention that they called the green shovel of science. Can you explain what the green shovel of science does? So the green shovel of science it actually is the tool that lets us cut the animal, protects the animal as we're cutting away, and so we don't puncture any special organs. Kieran actually is one of the first inventors of the green shovel of science. So after they collected muscle tissues and all the organs, uh, they went to cut open the uteri in which there were uh, still unborn pups of the shark. Now, six gill sharks have the pups developed from eggs into fully miniature sharks that are then born live. So um, it's a little bit different than sharks that lay eggs and then leave and the egg hatches on its own. These one actually come right out of the mother shark. It was quite interesting to see how the miniature sharks were all stacked up in the uterus. You could almost say like sardines in a can, although you would be referring to a different species. There were about 73 pups coming out of there and all were measured and numbered for further DNA and other research. And as they passed around a few of the sharks to the onlookers to have people look at it, it was actually quite interesting to hear all the, you know, expressions of, oh, this is so cute. Because cute is normally not a word that people tend to use for sharks, but I guess with the ongoing public outreach and education, people become more and more educated about sharks and don't seem to, seem to look at them at the mindless killers that they used to be um, seen as. 
most likely they will not be able to uh, determine the exact cause of death. It could be complication from, you know, pregnancy, trying to give birth, uh, they could have a, a sepsis event. It It's hard to determine, but hopefully with the pups um, and the DNA information that comes out of that, we can learn a little bit more about this uh, incredibly uh, beautiful animal.